everybody wants a fresh start. And sometimes after you've had setbacks in life, you've had difficulties in life, you want a fresh opportunity. But more so when you have missed opportunities, when you have failed in the past, when you've made mistakes in the past, you want a chance to start afresh. And every new year is, is God's reminder to us that he is the God of new beginnings. When we start a new year, God is telling you, I am a God of new beginnings. I, I can start afresh with you. I can do something new with you. I can do something new with your life. Every new morning, it's an indication that God is ready to do something new with our lives. And every new year is an opportunity to experience something new, something wonderful, something special from God. You may have had disappointments in a previous year, but you don't have to carry your disappointment into the new year. A new year is the opening of a new chapter. Some people carry the same attitudes, the same anxieties, the same fears, the same defeat from one year to the other year. And what they say is, well, it doesn't matter. A day is a day. Uh, a new year is like old. Uh, today is like yesterday. Yesterday is like today. It's not true. There are changes that happen every day. God has given us a fresh start. It's a new opportunity for us to experience him at a new level. There are four things that God does for us so that we can experience a fresh start. The first important thing we require in order to have a fresh start in life is remission of sins. There is nothing that gives us a fresh start than that which takes away our sins. So for a new year or something new to happen, the remission of sin, therefore, is critical for us to experience freshness in life. Why is that so? Because unforgiving sins create guilt and the guilt of our sins break our spirit. If you go through life carrying guilt and guilt and guilt upon you your your whole life becomes defeated your spirit is broken your confidence is broken you are weighed down by the burdens of your mistakes of your shortcomings of your failures but when god comes in he deals with that so that the burden of our sins are lifted off you cannot go through life successfully with sin weighing heavily upon you that's why there is forgiveness that's why there is atonement you remember when when uh, in south africa when they went through apartheid and uh, and and went into the new dispensation they set up an, a reconciliation process we did so too in ghana uh, and, and, and Sierra Leone has done that. Why is it necessary for a nation that is trying to move on to do reconciliation? And what they did, did they do in reconciliation? All they said is, if you've done something wrong, come and say it. And tell the person he's sorry and let the person, uh, you're sorry and let the person forgive you. Why? Because even nations recognize that when people have guilt upon them and they don't deal with the guilt, they malfunction they don't function well in the same way spiritually when we don't deal with sin in our lives we don't function at our optimum the good news is that God is willing to forgive us of all our sins God is willing and he does it totally he forgives all our sins totally and so yes there is a burden of sin but we have a God who willingly and totally forgives us when we sin. And so you have no need to carry your sin any longer. You have no need to carry the burden of guilt any longer. Because God wants to forgive you. This morning, you can experience God's forgiveness. You can have a brand new start. For some people this morning, they are going to start afresh with God. There are people who need a break from sin so they can start living in freedom in christ 
some of you are weighed down with too much guilt because you've done terrible things although you are a child of god and they are weighing down on you it it, it, it makes you feel guilty when you start praying it, you lose your confidence when you're talking to god even when you are with people you feel the sense that some maybe some people even see the sins you sin secretly god wants to wipe away your sins and give you a fresh start he's able to forgive us and when god forgives us he brings us into blessing god's forgiveness doesn't just leave us it blesses us and so the psalmist says blessed is the man whose sins are covered blessed is the man to whom the lord does not impute iniquity when god forgives us we experience a state of blessedness so remission of sin is the first step towards experiencing a fresh start for your sins to be wiped away and for you to have a fresh slate to write on not to write on with more sins but a fresh slate to write on with righteousness remission of sin remission of sin leads to the second miracle that brings about a fresh start in our lives and that is regained confidence your sins have been remitted your sins have been forgiving confidence comes back regained confidence when god forgives our sins he gives us confidence to come before his presence boldly when god forgives us there is a restored confidence there is nothing like having confidence with god knowing that when you stand to pray god will not strike you down with judgment knowing that you are right with god you have a right standing with him that god loves you god accepts you that you are special before him nothing gives us confidence more than that when you know that you can approach his throne without any sense of guilt regained confidence assurance of god's presence banishes fear and timidity when god is on our side there is no fear and there's no timidity you know sometimes people wonder why believers would gather at the beginning of a new year and be positive because people will say do you know the troubles that will befall you do you know the dangers on the way do you know this and do you know do you know there are people who enter the new year with a lot of fear the whole transition to the new year is a transition to the unknown there is no confidence there is no faith there is all fear there is all intimidation but when god is on your side what can you be afraid of and so because we are reconciled with god we can face the new year without any fear and you can enter the new year where people are running away you can go and say breakthrough and they may be talking about oil prices going up but in the midst of all of that we enter the new year not intimidated not afraid because god is on our side the global situation may be terrifying but if god be for you who can be against you the economic prognosis may not be exciting may not be compelling but if god be on your side who can be against you he says you he will furnish us with abundance in the midst of the desert he's the one who is able to open the rock and bring water out he's the one who is able to rain bread from heaven if he's on your side there is no fear and that confidence does not come because we believe ourselves and we trust ourselves it comes because we are assured of god's presence when i enter the new year i enter with the assurance the lord is with me when you enter you enter with the assurance the lord is with me oh yes you don't know what is going to happen in february you have no idea what will happen in june you have no idea what will happen in august and in december but why do you think if you have no idea what will happen it means it must be evil logically it means it could also be good so i have no idea what will happen in february maybe my plane will finally arrive so if god is on your side instead of saying maybe and think of the negative you say maybe and think of the blessing because god is on your side our confidence comes because we have a right standing 
with Jehovah Almighty. It doesn't come from our education. It doesn't come from our tribe. It doesn't come from a promise a man has given to us. It comes because the Lord is with us. With confidence in God, we can fully embrace life. Real life can be embraced. You can go through life excited. You can go through life believing the best to happen to you. Life is sweet. I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, life is sweet. Life is good. It's good to be alive, but it's good to enjoy life. And God has given us the opportunity to embrace life in all its goodness. You know, there's nothing like waking up in the morning, maybe at dawn at, at five o'clock or four o'clock, sp- stepping out of your house, breathing in the fresh morning air, lifting up your hands to God and say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. That's a great way to start a day. That's a great way. You are embracing everything the day is coming with. Oh, will there be trouble? Yes. But you know, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up a standard against him. You don't, you are not ignorant of the problems of the world, but you are also not ignorant of the power of God. Whilst you acknowledge the problems of the world, acknowledge also the power of God to save, to deliver, and to redeem. So you can embrace life every morning. Every morning of this year, embrace life. Enter the day with confidence. Even if you slept last night with bad news, get up this morning with faith. Because the same way as one moment you had bad news, in the same way one moment that bad news can be cancelled. You cannot imprison yourself in negativity. You have to liberate your mind to embrace all the goodness that God has for you. Why? Because you stand before the Lord. You are assured of his presence. You have no, he has no problem with you. He is not ready to kill you. He is ready to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Oh, with God, we can embrace life fully. God's help is always available to us. And that's the source of our confidence. In a fresh start, we have remission of sins. In a fresh start, we receive regained confidence. And in a fresh start, we have reclaimed opportunities. Reclaimed opportunities. There is nothing like missing an opportunity have you missed an opportunity before when you mix an opportunity you feel like knocking your head you say what 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 happened to me you you feel so angry why 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 and it's gone but when god gives us a fresh start he's able to recycle lost opportunities he's able to help us regain opportunity some of you may have done some terrible things missed opportunities messed up whatever you've done you know your your life you know your stuff and sometimes you look back and say will it will i have opportunity again so first thing with note is that god's redeeming love helps us to make up for past failures the situation may not be the same but the effect will be the same and so when god gives you opportunity it may not be the same thing you may not go back to your primary school to go and uh repent to that teacher who's um cassava you are prooted and cooked you may not have the chance but god will give you an opportunity to cook cassava for somebody else who is alive today you may not be able to go back to say sorry to your father or to your mother they are dead but you can build a better relationship with somebody here in life so it's not the same thing you can go back to the same situation to correct the mistakes but he will give you an equal opportunity to right the mistakes And when that opportunity comes, it cancels the past mistake and affirms you in the right thing that God wants you to do now. Some of you have missed opportunities in the past, but today there's opportunity before you. Don't close your eyes to the new opportunities that God is giving you to reclaim what you lost in the past. We respond anew to God's call by realigning our will to his. Realign your will. To the will of God. It gives you new opportunity. It gives you a new chance. And God's restoring grace. Gives our original assignment. Back to us. When God gives us back what we have lost. He takes us back to where we missed it. And makes us continue from the same place. Where we missed 
his will. Some of us are getting ready this year to experience reclaimed opportunity. You know, I, those of you who've known me for a while, you know, I talk about a time years ago when somebody took me to a place to buy land in now East Ligon. And uh, at that time, uh, he was selling me, believe it or not, a plot of land was, I think, uh, 20 cities. Now, if you go to East Ligon, it's about how much? $70,000 dollars some hundred thousand dollars I would, I would have been quite rich by now 20 plots i missed it and anytime i go through that place and i know the spot i knock my head i say ah, ah. i insult myself too but you can go on knocking your head it won't bring the land back but whilst i couldn't buy that land there are people who have offered me land in new east Legons. all right the new east Legon is not at east Legon. it may be somewhere way in the bush but because i've learned my lesson and God has opened the opportunity for cheap land in a faraway place. I buy it. Because 20 years from now, I don't want to knock my head again. 20 years from now, I want to tell my grandchildren, you see, your grandpa is smart. Your grandpa is a smart man. He saw this thing and bought it. And I, t- I bought it cheap. All right. So God will always give you opportunity. You may have missed it 20 years ago. But he'll present you opportunity. The thing is that many times when God brings us opportunity, we want the same opportunity. Finally, fourth miracle that God brings us to have a fresh start is restored blessings. We have regained confidence. We have reclaimed opportunities. And we have restored blessings. There are things you've left behind. Blessings that people took away from you. God is able to restore to you. (laughs) So, what falls from your hand does not leave God's hand. You may have dropped it, but God didn't drop it. It was in his hand. God catches the things that fall from our hands. He keeps his eyes on the things that escape our attention. There will be times when you will lose things that God has blessed you with. But if you continue to walk in faith, you can have the full assurance that the Lord will restore. He has his eyes on the sparrow. His eye is upon you. He sees a strand of hair that falls from your head and he sees it when people try to steal what belongs to you from you. And remember this, that no one can keep a blessing that has your name on it. No one. If your name is on that blessing, no one can take it away from you. It's yours. That blessing is yours. That house is yours. That land is yours. That property is yours. That promotion is yours. It will go, 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 go. It will come back to you. It may be seven years. People will squat on your promotion. But after seven years, God will take it and give it back to you. It's your land. It's your blessing. It's your marriage. It's your favor. It's your child. Whatever it is, it's yours. It has your name on it. When God created that miracle, he customized it with your name on it. And no one can steal it from you. At the right time, he will orchestrate events to your favor so that your blessing will come back to you. In the breakthrough year, it's a year of a fresh start. Remission of sins. Regain confidence. Your confidence will come back. Your opportunities will be reclaimed. And your blessing will be restored. Get ready to experience the power of God at a very high level.